Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus for another beautiful day. Glory be to the Lamb of God. I'm going to go ahead on and pray a sin. Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. Father, just thanking you for these opportunities to share a word. I ask that you would speak through my heart, that you would bring up key points. And I ask, Father, that you minister to your people in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Lamb of God. Praise the Lord Jesus for another day. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. A lot of people didn't wake up today. So praise the Lord Jesus. We still alive. We still trucking. If you're listening to this video today, you blessed. Hallelujah. A lot of people have woken up in the torments of hell this morning. A lot of people woke up in a place far beyond their wildest imaginations. And they are in a place right now where the worm never dies and the fire is never quenched because they rejected Jesus. And a lot of people reject Jesus. I see it in my day-to-day -day life. God leads me to people daily that he gives me opportunities to minister to and, and to pour into their lives. And, and people, they reject Jesus. We live in a God-rejecting world where everything in this world opposes the reality of Jesus Christ. Everything in this world is satanically designed to draw your attention away from the most important thing in life, and that's the salvation of the soul. People are so caught up in other things. And when you talk to them about Jesus, you talk to them about salvation, it just seems so unattractive to them. And they don't want to give their life to the Lord. And because of their rejection, be, because they are not willing to come to the Lord, they're going to spend an eternity in hell. And I believe that if we just got a glimpse of the reality of hell, our whole lives would change. The way we spend our time would change. We would realize that there is no time to waste. That we must preach the gospel. That we must witness for Jesus Christ. That we must lay down our lives on the altar of sacrifice for the souls of humanity because people are being damned to hell. And people are going to hell by the bundles. And Jesus needs us to witness. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Glory be to the Lamb of God. The Bible says in Acts chapter 1 that the Holy Spirit was given to the disciples so that they can have power to be witnesses. This is the purpose of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost comes into our life so that we can become witnesses for Jesus Christ. The Holy Ghost looks to glorify the Son. Jesus, hallelujah, praise the Lord Jesus. This is what it's all about. It's about glorifying Jesus Christ, about lifting up his name, about preaching the cross. Hallelujah. And you'll come to see that when you start to talk to people, <laughs> they don't want to hear about the cross of Christ. It's foolishness to them. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. The Bible says that the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are dying and perishing. But it is the power of God to those who are being saved. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's foolish to those who are dying and perishing. People will think the message of the cross is foolish. And I notice that when you talk to people, 
that have been familiar with you all your life, they don't easily receive the message of the gospel. It's really hard to get to, to reach those who have been familiar with you. Jesus said that a prophet has no honor in his hometown. He gets no honor amongst friends and relatives and family. And you'll encounter this stuff when you interact with people who are familiar with you. That's people like in your family, people in the streets of your hometown, people that know you or knew you all your life. They won't easily receive from you because they're so familiar with you. And I see that oh, as I witness for the Lord Jesus. God will connect me with a lot of people that I used to run with, people that I used to sell drugs to, people that I used to get high with, people that I used to get drunk with. God will connect me with these people and I'll begin to preach to them and I'll begin to talk to them about getting their lives right and they will not want to receive what I got to say. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. They think it's strange that you don't run with them in the same flood of wasteful living. And they say things about you. Hallelujah. They'll mock you and stuff like that. Praise the Lord. That's in scripture. Watch. First Peter chapter four, verse three. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles. When we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, reviles, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. In regard to these things, they think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dispensation speaking evil of you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. They will think it's strange that you don't live the lifestyle they're living. They don't, they'll think it's strange that you're not hanging on the blocks anymore, selling drugs with them and getting high and, and, and getting drunk. Hallelujah. They'll think it's strange now when you come to them and you see them on the streets and you start talking to them about Jesus and you talk to them about the love of God. They'll think it's strange and they'll say stuff about you. Hallelujah. And it's hard to reach those who are familiar with you, those who have been knowing you your whole life. And I, I experience this all the time. God will connect me with a lot of people that I used to run with. I just ran into one just a few minutes ago. And I talked to him about the Lord, shared with him what the Lord was doing in my life. I spoke to him about hell. I spoke to him about repentance. And he listened. It's like, you know, the Lord put him um, on silent mode where he would just listen. But he was trying to wiggle his way away from me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He was trying to wiggle away and eventually he did. But glory be to the Lamb of God. The seed was planted. And I just hope and pray that, you know, he comes to a knowledge of the truth. And he gives his life to the Lord. Because hell is real. Hell is a reality. Jesus preached about it. Jesus preached about a place for those who reject the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it is a place of hell fire. And in Matthew chapter 5, he didn't just get, say it was hell. He said it was hell fire, given a very descriptive term, meaning it was a place of torment for those who reject the gospel of Jesus Christ. For those who do not repent. And the Bible says in Luke chapter 13, verse 3, so likewise... If you do not repent, you are going to perish. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. People are going 
to perish without repentance. Without repentance, there cannot be no transformation. There cannot be no connection with Christ. There cannot be no infilling of the Holy Ghost. There cannot be no restoration that comes through your life from the presence of the Lord. Everything that we get from the kingdom of God comes through repentance. Acts chapter 3 verse 19 says, Repent and be converted so that your sins may be blotted out and that times of refreshing may come from the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Lord. God wants to refresh in people's lives, but He needs them to come into a place of repentance. And in order for them to come into a place of repentance, the preaching of the gospel must go forward. We must be willing to witness for Christ. We must be willing to lift up our voices. We must be willing to lay down our lives and deny ourselves, deny our reputations, deny what we feel or care about what people say about us and go forth and witness for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. People cannot repent without hearing the gospel preached. The Holy Spirit brings conviction through the preaching of truth. And we who are witnesses for Christ must go forward and preach the truth of God's word. There must be some exposure to darkness so that people can be convicted of darkness. Light has to expose darkness. This is how the conviction comes. This is how the Holy Spirit brings conviction. He works in partnership with a man and a woman who was filled with the Spirit of God to bring that conviction to people's lives through the truth of God's Word. We shed light on darkness with truth. And when we do this, the darkness is exposed, people's eyes are opened up, and they see the sin, they see the rebellion, and they get convicted, and when conviction comes, they feel a sorrow for the rebellion that they in towards God, or they get angry and mad and they oppose you. But we must expose darkness with light. Ephesians 5, 11 says, Have nothing to do with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose it. Have no fellowship with darkness, the scripture says. But expose it. And that word expose in its Greek context is the word convict. So God works in partnership through the Holy Ghost with a man or a woman who is filled with the presence of God to bring truth so that truth can bring conviction. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God needs his people to be willing to lift up their voices, to be willing to interact and engage their community, and engage the people around them, to engage the people in their towns, and begin to interact with them, and talk to them about truth, to talk to them about the reality of what's really going on, because most people are in a delusion. They live in out a, a lie, thinking they live in out a reality, but in truth, they are deceived. It's like they are veiled and they don't see what's really going on. They don't realize that they are on a collision course with the judgment of God. They don't realize that the axe is at the root of the tree. And that every tree that does not produce a productive life of repentance is going to get chopped down in the judgment. And God needs his people to lift up their voices. 
God needs his people to preach the word of God. God needs his people to have a backbone in this season. God needs his people to be bold. The Bible says the righteous are as bold as lions. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. We need to be bold as lions in this season. We need to cast off our reputations. We need to cast off being concerned about what people think about us and stand for the gospel and stand for Jesus Christ because Jesus is looking to save souls and he needs us to come in partnership with him. He needs us to be willing to go where he is wanting us to go. He needs us to be willing to go into the marketplaces and witness for Jesus. He needs us to be willing to go to our communities and engage those people that knew us all our lives. Even though they're familiar with us. Even though they may reject us and mock us and laugh us at us. He is looking for people who are willing to be bold enough to say, I'm going to go out there, Lord. Send me, I'll go. Like Isaiah said, here I am, Lord. Send me, I'll go. God is looking for willing vessels who are willing to lay down their lives. Who are willing to deny themselves and pick up their cross and follow Jesus. He is looking for people who are willing to answer the call, to step out of complacency, to press into their fears and not allow fear to hinder them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Like Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. It's the power of God. Hallelujah. It's the way God saves souls from the damnation of hell. And people are going to hell by the bundles. People are going to hell right now as I speak. People are dying. Every second people are dying. They are stepping in to their eternal destiny. They are stepping in to the realities of the torments of hell because they are dying without the salvation grace of Jesus Christ. And if a person dies without that saving grace of Jesus Christ that comes through a relationship, that comes through a union with the Holy Spirit of God, when they die, they are going to step into hell. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And whoever goes to hell, they stay in hell. There's no Bibles in hell. There's no friends in hell. There's no second chances in hell. Whoever goes to hell, they stay in hell. It's final. It's settled. A person's destiny is sealed. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. So I pray that we would live with an eternal perspective. That we would not allow the illusion of this world and the illusion of life to try to draw us away from what's the most important thing. And the most important thing is the preaching of Jesus Christ. The most important thing is souls. Is people hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I pray that we will be bold in this season. I pray that we would stand for truth. That we would be bold as lions. That we would stand with Christ with a fierce loyalty. Willing to lay down our lives. Willing to sacrifice who we are. To be all that Christ called us to be. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I pray that y'all blessed today and that y'all keep fighting the good fight of faith and keep waging a good warfare. Hallelujah. Y'all be blessed in Jesus' mighty name.